This over here is the best mini PC that Geekcom does right now. And I guess the best requires gold font. But what it's actually like, how much performance is there, what's the cooling like, what's inside the PC, that's what we're going to be finding out. And I'm looking at the listing of this on Amazon right now. It goes just shy of $1,000. Why is it so expensive? Let's find out. Three years limited warranty. That's three times longer than Apple's. Oh, this box is different. Okay, look at that. Geekum logo. We've got the mini PC. Oh no, they haven't fixed it. I'll show you what I mean. Some instruction manuals. Ooh, there's a drawer. Now that's packaging. HDMI cable, our power brick, and vase amount. Oh, some screws as well. This power brick is 120 watts. And here's the mini PC. So this is very similar design to the XD12 Pro. And looks like the outside is exactly the same. But is the inside different? Oh my word. <laughs> they have made the same mistake. First, let's turn this PC on. Check out the performance of this. So the PC is working. We've got the updates done. Everything is up and running. But before I'm actually going to show you something like that, I want to show you this. So this is the listing on Amazon, the XD13 Pro, which has the 3900H, which is exactly the same model I have here. Quite an expensive price. But when you look at the product images, there's some weird things going on. This looks all right. Now, this is where things get a little bit funny. Um, this is not an SSD. And this is not RAM. This is the SSD and this is the RAM. So whoever's done these, um, Geekcom, these need to be changed. Another thing is they show all the ports that are on this PC, but actually there's more ports, but they're hidden. Let me show you. Let's take a look at the specs then what we have here. This is the 13900H, which is a 14 core and 20 thread CPU. Interestingly, we're running DDR4, not DDR5. This guy could run DDR5, but for some reason, we're opting for a little bit a lower DDR4. We've got a fast NVMe. We'll start the speed test on the side here. We've got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Not bad. And the Intel XC graphics that's built into the CPU. As you can see, our SSD is rather fast. 7,000 megabytes per second read speed. So they've really opted for very high engine four drive, yet very low end RAM. As you can see, even write speed, is rather good. We'll stop it for now. So time to test the CPU and what it's made of. Firstly, this is all the stock settings. I haven't changed anything. We're just going to press go on this Cinebench. Let's take a look at how, how many watts are we pulling. Whoa, it's jumping up quite high, quite fast. 60 watts. That's quite a bit. Wow, 96 degrees. This is a very tiny PC that packs a lot of power. And we're thermally throttling. There's not a lot that it can do and it pushes it down quite a bit. Our PL2 is 64 watts and then PL1 35 watts. I mean the 35 watts we could probably take higher to about 50 watts because right now we're not thermally throttling but it is 27.8 degrees in this room which is quite warm environment for this. But cooling, I'm not necessarily impressed with this. It's very very small so putting something so powerful in here kind of doesn't make sense so what we could do is if we went to xdu here our secondary 35 watts we'll just push that one to let's say 49 watts and then let's push it a bit longer as well the time window so now you got our 13,000 points last time let's take a look at this run yikes it's instantly thermally th throttling 100 degrees the fans kick in like a bit later. And when the fans kick in, the temperatures start to drop. Four of the 6P cores are thermally throttling. We're trying to push the 62 watts or 64 watts through as much as we can, but it's pulling the power down. So this is about as much power that we can squeeze through. Let's see what the score is going to be. About 15,000 points. So if you remember, we checked out the XD12 Pro and there we got 12,000 something points. Here we're getting 15,000 points, which is quite a bit of an increase, about 25% extra, but we probably have a little bit more in store if we pushed it a little bit more in a cooler environment because that is quite warm. Let's take a look at the single core and what we're going to be boosting to. Should be five something gigahertz. 
No, the maximum is 4.5. Something's not quite right. It should go 5.4. Our single core is down a bit. Let's take a look at BIOS and see if there's anything we can change. Okay, here we are. What can we see in the front? First one, nothing advanced. LAN Wi-Fi maximum memory frequency. So that's probably what it's trying to run here. Wait a second. Is this DDF5? No, DDF4. But interestingly, I've never seen that one before. Do you want to run DDF4 at 12,800 megahertz? Um, probably not. Power mode, performance mode. Alrighty. Okay, now our single core is going. I restarted it. As you can see, we're going 5.4 gigahertz. That's a bit more. Interestingly, turbo power now is 80 watts. So the performance mode pushes it to 80 watts and the PL2 or PL1 is uh, 40 or something like that. Do you know what? I'm going to run everything unlimited and see how much power <laughs> it actually pulls and what it's going to do. Okay. Why not? Are you ready for some serious thermal throttling? Let's empty this. Multicore go. And what's going to happen now? Inst instantly. 100 watts, what we're pushing through, 74 watts, woo, that's going down, 66 quite fast, 62, trying to push, well, only 3.3 gigahertz on the P cores, the fans have kicked in now quite loud, trying to cool this down to maintain the high power draw and boost clocks, okay, we cooked the CPU, 74 watts, 101 degrees, everything's thermal throttling in peak cores, and we got 15,283, about the same. So what I recommend is you stick to the lower limits because you really can't push that much through it because of the cooling. Talking about cooling, let's open it up and see what's inside. But regardless, this is very, very small and very, very compact. I quite like the design. Kikom always does very nice mini PCs. We have a little intakes from the side and exhaust out from the back. In terms of I.O., we've got 2.5 gig LAN, two HMI ports, two USB type C ports that are USB 4, then one 10 gigabit and one USB 2 um, type A ports, your power plug in there. We've got Kensington lock on the side there. In the front, we had two more USB type A 10 gigabits speed ports and then mic headphone combo jack power button i wish there was type c in the front as well i'd rather have one type a one type c but i get why you have two of these because you've got your like keyboard or wireless things like that that go in the front there but at the same time if you do have receivers i'd probably put them in the back because your front will be like your usb sticks or hard drives or something like that that you access from the front that's easy to access so we've got four screws Ooh, you're not gonna lose them. That's nice. And they're not hidden anywhere underneath. So you don't have to peel anything off. That's nice. And now, okay. I guess it's just gonna peel up like that. Okay, it doesn't come quite as easily, but it is open. So underneath here, what we can see is your little thermal pad for your M.2 SSD. There you can install two, one full size, 80 millimeters long and then one short 40 millimeter m.2 that you can add later on but there is a little copper heatsink interestingly it's not attached to the bottom panel but like an extra bit of heatsink there here is the bit that um, makes me question what is going on they've got an sd card slot on the side here and since we've got it open i've got an sd card here and then let's test if it actually works. So I'm gonna put the power back on, HDMI port in the back. Okay, let's turn it on. Okay, the PC is on. Let's install this SD card. There we go. Oh, it actually opens. This is a V90 card, so let's see how fast is it. Let's write something onto it. So I'm taking these files now off the SD card, writing them onto desktop. How about the same, about 180 megabytes per second. So this is a very fast SD card that I have here actually. This is the V90 card from Kingston. This is the Canvas React Plus, UHS-2 rated. So this should be reading up to 300 megabytes per second. So as we can see that one there, it's not the slowest one because UHS-1 or usual one would be like up to 100 megabytes per second. So it's a little bit faster, but not the fastest. But Geekum, why didn't you chisel a bit out from the chassis so we could actually use the SD card slot? Because it would be so useful. 
Come on. Interestingly, if you look close, this part here is a ribbon cable, but this is a SATA part. So you could add SATA SSD here as well, even though it doesn't support it in terms of like, there's nowhere to mount it. You could somehow put it in the back, I guess. Just flop it. Actually, you couldn't. You couldn't put it anywhere. But there is a SATA part in there. We've got two more USB headers. I think these could be USB 2.0 headers. I'm not sure internal headers. This is our RAM. Woobtit RAM. Never heard of that one before. I guess Thedia 4 sodium sticks are very, very cheap. And our NVMe drive. This is two terabytes. So this is actually quite a good price or quite a high-end SSD. Not a bad one at all. It's very, very good. Then underneath here, we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And interestingly, they do give you a screw for the secondary slot. A lot of mini PCs don't have that. So you'd have to have some kind of extra screw in order to get that working. Let's get the antennas off. And then a few more screws so we could take a look other side. Okay, so that was only two screws, and now this should be coming off. Okay, here we have the cooler. They've done well and painted this black in here, but I wish the fan was actually a little bit deeper, the chassis was a little bit bigger. I mean, it is very, very compact, very, very small, but as you can see, for this type of CPU, it probably requires a little bit more cooling than what we are given here. Okay, so the fan comes off. It's an overclock DC brushless fan, okay? And underneath here, we've got the heatsink. The heatsink goes over the MOSFETs in there as well. You can see a thermal pad underneath there and then a little bit there and it's connected to the heat pipes that go over this, but it's not very, very good. And as you can see, our chip is only covered with a heat pipe in the middle. If you open this up, the heat pipe is actually gonna be a little bit more than just on the sides. So let me open this up. Yeah, so as you can see, we've only got heat pipes touching on that side in the middle rather than on the side. I guess they know where the um, actual P cores and, you know, the CPU cores are. Because as you can see, this is a chiplet design. We've got two chiplets in here. There wasn't much cooling on the side. As you can see, it does make contact from the side there in the end. But the performance cores are going to be on this part there. Can we get better thermal paste application? Well, let's see. I'm caking it in thermal paste. Okay, that's way too much, but sometimes the more the better. But it's nice to know that there's big thermal pads for all of this power delivery. So that is, that's very good. Okay, I've screwed it down. I think I'm gonna get better performance now. We'll turn it back on and see. Now, it would be a different case if we had vapor chamber for this. At this price point, I think would probably be nice. Would be nice to have a vapor chamber here, like we had on the B-Link PC and the Orion PC. They had AMD chips in there, but the cooling was absolutely incredible. Although they did pull a little bit less power than this guy here. In terms of serviceability and adding more storage, it's very very easy to do. So let's see if our thermal paste application made a difference. Okay, boosting to 5.4, we have thermal throttle already, hit 88, but let's see what the, a bit of a long-term option here goes. Okay, goes to 100 degrees, let's have a look at the clock speeds. 3.4, 3.56, 3.5, are we able to keep it there? 2.8 on the ECOS, quite low clock speeds though. Now PECOS go 2.9 gigahertz as well. That's very, very low for this type of wattage. 41 watts that we're pulling there. So a little bit of a lower score. So as you can see, making that thermal paste exchange didn't make any difference. So then, in conclusion, is this worth getting? And I've kind of got mixed feelings. In one sense, it is very small and packs a lot of power. And there's kind of no, you know, rivals for this. If you need Intel, it's got a lot of cores, a lot of power. But at the same time, the cooling is a little bit on the lower end side. It doesn't quite cool as well as some of the other PCs I've checked out on the channel. And to me, a big fail is the SD card slot that actually works and is on the side. We didn't test it on the XD12 Pro, but the XD13 Pro will actually work as well. So this is the best PC Geekcom has, but I think it still lacks a few things that I think need to be changed. So Geekcom, if you're watching this, we might want to chisel something out from the chassis. But hey, if you want to check it out, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. And if I can find some uh, coupon codes or deals that you can get a discount, then uh, I'll leave them in the description below as well. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.